Hello and welcome to a Carnegie Healthcare Seminar. My name is Maria and I'm an analyst here at the bank. With me here today I have Johan Verborg, CEO at Ignovo. Welcome. Thank you very much, Maria. And we will talk about a little bit about the company first. You will have a presentation and then we will end with a short Q&A session. So please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, Iconovo is a company that develops complete inhalation products that is a dry powder in one of our inhalation devices. And we offer those to a global market. Uh, and we are actually one of the leading and one of the few companies that are active within this field. And we can offer companies around the globe three core competencies. We have our own inhalation platforms, four of them. We have a department who can do dry powder formulations in-house. And we have a department uh, which does all the wet chemistry, the analysis that is needed to complete a really great inhalation product. And to do this, you need years of competence. You need a lot of skills. You need the hardware, uh, which we have in terms of, of the devices. And it requires a very special expertise. You need to be able to produce the inhalation devices on one side and navigate all the patents. You have to be able to make the powder, navigate the patents there, and in the end, you have to be able to combine the products and make a powder that dissolves in a very fine powder puff that uh, reaches deep down into the lungs of the patient. And for companies around, this is very hard to achieve. So we are here to help them to achieve that short term. And inhalation is also a very safe and effective way of administrating drugs. And more and more companies are using this technology. We base all of our business on our four inhalation platforms. We have IcoRes from the left to the right. We have IcoRes, which is something similar to uh, the billion dollar product Turbohaler from AstraZeneca. Uh, then we have IcoPre, which resembles the Ellipta inhaler from GSK. We have IcoCaps, uh, IcoCap, which is a capsule based inhaler where you pop in a little gelatin capsule and inhale. And we have ICO-1, which is a one piece of plastic device. You actually fold it together and all the technology and the components are on the inside, which makes that very uh, cheap to produce and very simple uh, uh, and novel. That also comes in a nasal version. ICO-Novo was founded 10 years ago in Lund. So we're actually based in the same area where Astra Draco had their inhalation facilities and research. And a lot of our competence in our 30 employees and in the leadership team that you see on, on this page uh, is based in the competence gained from companies such as AstraZeneca, but also the companies that we have uh, around us. And we have people with, with some great commercial skills as well that actually come with a a uh, lot of experience from bigger companies. It started in 2014 and when we started it was mostly around generic developments. We uh, did our first deal back in 2016, 2017 and those were uh, deals around generic versions of, of um, uh, for example, Symbicort. As time passed technology changed and we also developed more biological uh, substance competence and also some inhalers that can actually deliver those biological substances. And some of the most recent deals that you see on this page is uh, examples of biomolecules or novel compounds that you can inhale. Our business model is to use these inhalers and to outlicense them several times. And we therefore have a very sc scalable business model. And we normally always aim to reach a license agreement where our aim together with a partner is to put the uh, or make the drug ready to go into a uh, clinical trial. And we charge uh, a fee for this development. We have milestones over time and we always have the ambition to make it profitable du also during the development of the product. And then the real uh, profitable gain will be in the more Long, mid to long term where we have the, pro, uh, the built-in royalty flow coming in uh, which is basically 100% profit. 
So today we have, uh, I think there's uh, counted 10 projects in our pipeline. From, from top to bottom, we have a range of uh, big uh, generic companies, we have uh, smaller generic companies, we have some novel companies both in uh, Nordics, in Europe, but also in Australia, in, in the US and in Asia. I would just want to highlight some, some of the, the, the bigger and more near-term uh, possibilities that we have. This uh, development agree agreement with uh, American Amnil is a quite big thing. It's also quite near term. It's a licensing deal for 20 years with a royalty component of 5 to 10 percent. Uh, they have basically the whole world. Uh, we have the Nordics though, so we can sell the pharma ourselves in, in, Icon, in, in the Nordics by Iconova Pharma. And we have launched expectations there for 2025, so that is coming up. And it's a 2.5 billion dollar market worldwide. And the first goal here is to go for Europe. The second thing I want to highlight is a, a, a very, very big, it's the big opportunity. It's the world's largest asthma and COPD drug market. It's a portfolio actually of five products where Relvar Brio and Trelogy are the two uh, biggest opportunities. So we expect this to reach uh, well beyond five billion dollars in 2026, 27. And this is something that we are currently out licensing right now uh, in our IcoPre device. So our business areas is generics and novel things. And within the novel area we do reformulation and we do new substances. And the way we work is that we usually in the early phase we make a service contract or a feasibility agreement where we test if the, the partners uh, um, chemical substance actually is uh, able to being inhaled and we test out uh, a suitable device. Then if it works we move on to the next step where we have the license development where the aim is to reach a clinical trial stage. We also have the possibility to sell our inhalers and we can eventually then sell uh, products as well in the Nordics via Econova Pharma. And all of this is very important that we have a good margin in whatever we do today. And we are in this field because it's a really big opportunity. The market is growing and we come from asthma and COPD, but uh, the whole market is quickly shifting into inhaled versions of other lung disease treatments or uh, enzymatic di disorders and so on, acute and pain disorders and CNS uh, uh, disease. So this is a major opportunity growing from today's um, $15 billion to well beyond uh, 15th of $20 billion in 2027. And we want to be one of the leading companies in this transition. So companies are in, in, interested in going into this field because it has some additional benefits. So uh, you can have a more convenient administration than injections for sure. Find an earlier place in the treatment paradigm, uh, in the treatment ladder. By the lung you get a very rapid onset of action. You can also go nasal actually, that is fast for some uh, drugs to, to go into the nose. And then you actually have fewer side effects compared to oral since the drug doesn't have to pass the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, which can be a benefit as well. And you avoid food interactions. And from a pharma company perspective, the ones who contact us, they can see this as life cycle management or just de developing something brand new. Uh, they could, it could be segmentation of the market to protect business. And it could be to expand uh, the market through to, towards earlier use of the products. And then also we can have uh, in some uh, examples a lower cost of goods compared to uh, oral administration. And you may have seen recently uh, that we uh, a few weeks ago or a few days ago actually we released a press release that we are uh, having a we have filed a patent within the field of GLP-1 and we initiate a project to reformulate GLP-1s into inhaled versions. And this is actually a follow through on our uh, use of proceed statements from, from the, the last uh, directed share issue that we made earlier this year. 
and it communicates the start of our reformulation strategy. And we are at the point of time where we have the developed inhalers, we have the competence and we can actually quite cost effectively develop these new formulations, put in our inhalers and make ready for out licensing. Um, so the patent in itself is a combined inhaler and formulation patent. And just to give you some background on this, uh, a reason that we are doing this is because it's a huge market, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it can bring, it, I think it will reach 90 billion US dollars uh, the coming year. And one prior drug, uh, drug that has uh, been made inhaled was glucagon, which was owned by Lilly and then it went over to Amphastar. But this drug is a, a clear case of where inhalation, this is the nasal inhalation, can expand these markets and help grow well beyond the, what we thought was possible. There are other examples as well, such uh, as uh, Afresa within uh, diabetes. So this is coming towards the metabolic diseases and we want to be part of that. So just rounding off, uh, uh, the company is in a good position. We uh, uh, did a directed share issue in the beginning of the year and we had a cash position of uh, slightly under 40 million at the end of Q1. Uh, we are very proud of our, of our owners. We have a, a, a good list of long-term owners where uh, Mr. Jera Lengström is our main shareholder with 17% and we have several funds in our, um, in our uh, line up here. So the financial leverage of the company is to uh, become a profitable company by 2026. And our target for 27 is to reach 250 million at a 50% EBITDA mar margin. And this will then transfer the company through a number of, of well-defined events, everything from outlands licensing of IcoPre beginning to sell ICORES in the Nordics and in Europe and out licensing these reformulation um, um, products that we are developing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johan. I'm not going to let you go without some questions, so we'll uh, start not. maybe with an easy one. You yeah. mentioned that you're one of the few companies who work in the DPA market. Yeah. Could, you ex could you just tell us what does the competitive landscape look like? Who are the other actors? How do you mm. differentiate yourselves from them? Um, we have different competitors within the field of generics and within the field of novel or reformulation. But I mean, uh, we are a company that is uh, offering something that is very rare and that is these li the line of, uh, up of platforms that we have. Even big uh, competitor companies doesn't have that. But some, some companies that are quite similar and really have they are like uh, an Iconovo, uh, they are, if you fast forward maybe five years, we can become one of those companies. So Vectura is a British company who is having the same type of model as we. They are a much bigger company and have uh, sold themselves to Philips Morris, uh, uh, etc. Um, then we have Hovione, for example, we have uh, Aptar, uh, just to, to bring some examples. But most companies that we compare with are like 10 or 20 or 30 fold bigger than, than, than we are actually. So we, in the, within this space, space, we're also the, the dynamic and easy to work with and light, uh, capital light uh, competitor. No big hurdles to jump over here. No, no, we, we can act very fast and uh, kind of have the wind in our back yeah. in this mm -hmm. space. And uh, you spoke a little bit about patents and the intellectual property, and I would like to ask you about uh, the recent uh, ICRS uh, patent approval in China. Mm -hmm. And you're also working with your patent strategy a lot. Can you yeah. explain for our viewers what is your patent strategy? How do you work with your intellectual property? Um, well, for starters, it's uh, Dr. Oris Lasto who is who's heading the, the patent uh, uh, portfolio nowadays. Uh, and he has a deep knowledge within this space, as you know, as a, a founder of Iconovo. And he um, and, and the leadership team plan very well that we should have a, a, a good coverage 
So all the inhalers that we uh, develop is novel. So it contains components and technology that doesn't, it's designed to not infringe what is out there. So it's unique mechanisms that we need to protect. And that's kind of the cornerstone in making good business, having the trust of the partners that we can uh, prove freedom to operate, it's called. And uh, by doing so, they can, be, uh, they can feel comfort that they are not infringing uh, anything, else, anything along the way. And then, of course, we work with global coverage and, and kind of filing uh, not everything at once. Uh, it's quite tactical to make sure that you have a wide and, and long coverage of, of patents. Mm -hmm. And if we stay on the topic of uh, covering the patents, the mm. GLP-1 uh, topic here, you mentioned about that you've uh, recently filed for approval. Could yeah. you uh, just tell us a bit about how do you proceed from here? What, is, what can a typical timeline look like for a project such as this? Um, our goal here is to out-license uh, this product somewhere after in vitro uh, trials and, and maybe when the first animal models have, have passed. So we have developed, we, we will develop for this and for anything that comes beyond this point, we will develop a technical uh, product profile for each uh, where we need to go to, to, uh, to have acceptable proof of concept and have a really high value proposition for an out licensing uh, deal. So. Um, this will take us through then in vitro developing uh, this, where we test that it works to get it into the lung. We will also make sure that in, in animal models to make sure that you actually get the right concentration of the, the drug, the same as the original product in this case, to, so that we can prove it that, that it has the same efficacy. Uh, and at that point we will outlicense. And uh, this is somewhere around two, maybe up to three years uh, until we can really out-license mm -hmm. this. But it definitely is a very interesting market, oh, the Jokey yes. one. Oh, yes. Yes. So if you round up with a, a short pitch, why invest in Iconovo? Iconovo is in a unique area. We have a competence that is deep within the field of inhalation. We actually have four inhalation devices already developed ready to be used in license agreements. Then we are active in the market that are that is growing from like last year 15 billion dollars to projected 20 billion dollars in 2027. And we are at the forefront here. We have a, a possibility to, to be one and we are one of the leading companies within this space and we want to capture the opportunities that the shift into this inhaled new technology offers. And then I think uh, it's a very interesting point in time. Uh, we have some very near-term uh, triggers and we have some um, like short or mid-term uh, events that will be very interesting from an in investor point of view to follow as well. And I'm thinking about uh, uh, the out-licensing of Icopri the Ellipta portfolio, which is really ongoing, uh, and also the uh, R&D program, so the, the PK study program of the Symbicort generics that we're doing in our ICORES, that is performed currently by Amnil, and we uh, look forward to getting back to, to the investors and the markets as soon as we have uh, data that we need to, uh, uh, to communicate. Um, and then also, of course, we have high ambitions. The, the BD, so the business development colleagues and me have been working really hard the past year, going to a lot of events and I, we have identified so many interesting companies and there is so much dynamics going, uh, going around. But actually last year was a bit of a tough year where not many uh, companies were in the signing mode, so everybody was waiting. So we're looking forward to this kind of shift in the, in the in the macro climate that will trigger a lot more things happening as well. Onward and upward. Thank yeah, you, Johan. So, thank you.